Afternoon, Scott. Great to see you. You too. For the first time this season. Yeah. Um, 14 days, 8 hours and around 30 minutes until the window closes. You've been fairly active so far. How close are you potentially to getting a sixth signing in this summer? Um, well, we're, we're, we're hoping to, for sure. Uh, we're hoping to try and, to try and do some business um, before the, the window shuts, really. So um, how close we are, and, and wouldn't say we're close to, to anything at this present moment in time, but we're, yeah, we're trying to improve and trying to, to bring some players in to, to help the current team and the current squad, really. So um, that's the plan. Have you got an area you'd really like to strengthen? Um, there's a few really. There's a few areas where we're probably a little bit light for sure. Um, but yeah, I think generally we're you know there's areas that we all understand that we're probably going to need a little bit of improvement on, and and that's what we're we're trying hard to do. Former fans will be, will be desperate to know potentially how many new faces could come to the club. Is it sort of one or two, or, or maybe three or four that you'd like to bring in? Yeah, no, I don't. I'm, I'm, I won't engage in the numbers. I, you know what a transfer window's like. Is and certainly me as a manager. I, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a difficult. I, I couldn't really put a number on that. Really, I realise how difficult it is. I understand the challenges that we all face. Players that are at clubs, what what you want? Clubs don't want them to go. So look, there's a lot of work to be done between now and when the window shuts. Really, all I can say is we're hoping that we can try and bring some players in to to give us that help. What we need. What's the team news ahead of the weekend? Uh, team news is 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 probably similar to, to last week. Dominic Solanke, uh, maybe as a we'll, we'll, we'll assess that tomorrow um, regarding Joe Rothwell, Joe Rothwell, Ryan Fredericks. That will be too early for them to to come back in at the weekend, really. But other than that, everyone else has come out of last weekend all good, um, and yeah, we're fully fit in that sense. Obviously, one of your summer signings, Marcus Sanessi on the bench at the weekend. Is there a chance that you could use him from the beginning? Is he a player that's in your, your mindset and thinking? Because obviously clearly a lot of talent, a new face into the squad, you, you invested some good money in him. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a chance. Um, obviously Marco came in, um, didn't think it was the, the the right game for him and certainly after the work it, it, it had with us, barely had any work with us, so I felt it was a good decision to, to let him watch from afar and, and see exactly what He's experienced. Um, he's had another week of training, so yeah, he's in a better place to 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 maybe get the shirt at the weekend. But again, we'll see exactly where we are um, tomorrow, and I'll make that call on it. But certainly, he's in a he's in a better place than where he was um, last week, just down to training time and him being in, around the team a little bit more and the work he's been able to do with us. Clearly, Arsenal have had an, an excellent summer with their their recruitment, the the project that Edu and Mikel Arteta have been working on for some time now seems to be coming to fruition. Is is the Manchester City game the perfect warm up for this Arsenal match? Because you've got Mikel Arteta who worked under Pep Guardiola, you've got a very similar philosophy and uh, and set up in terms of the team. Clearly Zinchenko and, and Jesus are, are in that Man City mould. Is is this a, an opportunity to use what you did last week and, and maybe take it forward? Um it maybe is it'll probably be unfair on Mikel because he's done an incredible job in that sense. Uh, Similar team, um, for sure. Um, but look, the, the challenge is there. What Mikel has done in a short space of time at Arsenal and how that improvement's happened last year, narrowly missing out on fourth. And the progression that they've made in terms of the signings this year has only enhanced and improved them even more. I seriously see them as, as, as a team that are going to be right up there this year. And I see them improved, improved drastically another year as well. With, uh, under Mikel as well can only be um, can only be beneficial as well. So look, we've got a, a big challenge ahead of us at the weekend. A technical team, positional team that have huge quality all over the pitch. Um, so yeah, we'll embrace that. We're ready for that. We'll do the work we can to, to obviously try and nullify that um, and try and make it uncomfortable as much as we can when they come come here to our home ground. Um, while also understand the challenges that that, that we're going to face and the problems that they're going to cause really. With your analysis and your research and the way you've looked at Arsenal and from your comments there, would you suggest that they could be a team that could break Man City and Liverpool? They could get into the top two, they could challenge for the Premier League? Uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't, what I do know is is that they, they're heading certainly in the right direction in, in terms of everything that, that they're doing on the pitch. They're a team on the upward curve. 
off the pitch in terms of the signings they've made is a progress. There's a there's a real progression and a real idea and a philosophy around exactly what they've done. They've done some very good business. So they're a good side and they're they're a good team in terms of they're on the upward curve and this. Um, yeah, I see them improving drastically, really. And finally, from me, last week, obviously, Manchester City and, and Erling Haaland, a lot has been made this week about the fact that Bournemouth only allowed him eight touches. Is that because of your team, or was that because he had an off day? Uh, I'm not sure. What I do know is, look, we, he faced a real stubborn team in the way we set up, uh, made it very, very difficult for him in terms of, or tried to make it very difficult, no spaces really in, in, inside the pitch for, for certainly where he was playing. Um, but yeah, it, obviously he's had, he didn't have many touches, but other players in the Man City side, which obviously um, I referenced after that, you know, a top player in, in Haaland as a number nine. But when you play against Man City, the ability that they have is they have another nine, which are also world-class players. So um, yeah, look, we, um, we went there with a with a plan. We went there to try and give the best we can to try and nullify that. It didn't pay off on the day. They were far superior and, and much better than us. Um, so yeah, that's how I see that. Cheers, Mark. Cheers. Um, you mentioned the progression that um, Arsenal have made. It seems remarkable that this time last year they were bottom of the table, and you know there was all sorts of talk about Mikel's future. Um, how difficult is it? to change a team, put in your own project as Mikel has done there. I looked at the, you know, one of your last games in charge of Fulham was only a year, 15 months ago. And the, there's only going to be about four players that started that day that are likely to start this weekend. Hmm. And what, you, what, you, what do you mean? How, how difficult is it to... How, well, I suppose what I'm asking is how impressed you are with oh, right. what he's managed to put in place and how he has transformed it so they are playing the way they're playing now um, yeah million percent the one thing what you need is that you need trust you need time and Mikel will probably be the first to say I don't know but he definitely had that when the noise was around him and there was big noise for sure there was big noise um, he had trust in the people what had put him in place and he had the confidence to 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 get given some time to to structure things how we wanted to structure them and over the course of that time and that period where where he got that, it's been proven that he's came out the other side. And you normally find in football really good people um, who are good at their job and have clear plans with a bit of time and clear heads really. And people what can take some breath and, and understand where the situation currently is and see why that situation currently is, is you can be progressive really. So while Mikel has done an unbelievable job, in that sense, it's probably you'll be the first to say as well that when the noise was there, no one pulled the trigger, and um, uh, certainly he, he, he probably was able to go and do the job and execute the job how he wanted to do it and make big decisions, big calls. Um, and he's been, yeah, he's been proven that he's, uh, he's done very well for that. Elsewhere in the Premier League, we're sort of leaping to conclusions very early on 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 players after only two games. So on the other side of it. In danger of doing the same, but how? But we will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but rather than pointing the finger at someone not doing well, Gabriel Jesus is. I mean, that looks like a, an absolutely yeah, incredible signing. signing. Brilliant signing, yeah, amazing signing, really. And um, probably Mikel had the player when he was at Man City. So top forward, um, incredible centre forward. It's got probably every facet to to the, to his game really as a number nine. Can drop in, can drop down, link play. There's also a threat on your back line as well. Work rate, endless work rate as a modern day number nine in terms of pressing and leading the line from that sense. So, um, yeah, he's a real challenge for us at the weekend to, to try and keep him quiet. He's a big, big player for them. And without going into too much depth about everything on the Arsenal side of things, you know, I don't recognise some of football that's played in the Premier League these days, the way Xhaka and Zinchenko are switching and all these things. I mean, are you seeing a lot of uh, innovation and, and I suppose Pep Guardiola type stuff in this Arsenal team. Yeah, I am. I'm also seeing things that obviously a good coach, which Mikel is, is is producing at, at his football club and his team really. So a lot of challenges positionally, tactically in terms of 
in terms of how he set up the team. Um, and then obviously added to that is the quality of the player that can execute um, that that delivery of message really. So um, yeah, look, they're um, they're a good side, a well coached side, and a, a team full of players that possess good quality in, in in all moments really. And when you say you want to make it as uncomfortable as possible for them, what, what's the key to that? Is that just not allowing anyone a, a split second of time? Is there are there other elements to it? And there's loads of elements to that. There's 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 loads of elements. Put try and put our stamp on it. Try and work out where we can exploit their weaknesses, which they they will have. Um, and also home stadium fans um, in terms of what we need to bring to the game. There's loads of facets why we need to you know we need to step here. And while of course we respect everyone what steps on on the field when we play, there needs to be an element of you know these are just names and we need to we need to put our stamp on this game. Um, and we need to bring our personality to this game. And um, that's the most important thing, what we need, as well as the tactical element, as well as all facets, out of possession, in possession. Um, yeah, we need to bring personality to this game on Saturday. You made it very easy for your crowd to to build up an enormous atmosphere in the last home game by scoring after just a few seconds. Yeah. How much of a part have they got? Massive part, yeah, massive part to play, tight stadium. Um, mm -hmm. And they, they've got a big parts to play. We need to make this place uncomfortable this year for teams to, to come to. Um, we need to generate that. That's down to us. That's down to my players to do that. They need to generate. They need to get the energy and give the energy to the to the stadium. They need to give the energy to the to the crowd. How we do that is 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 with the way we play and how forceful we are. How how we can dominate in certain moments and be progressive in certain moments can bring that energy, and then we can react from that as well. Really. So. Um, Early goal last time, give everyone a lift. First game, Premier League, um, after two two years of not being in it, was was a massive lift and give everyone a, a big lift in the stadium, really. So, um, yeah, we need to continue that, really. Good luck, Scott. Cheers. Thanks, Thank you. Afternoon, Scott. Thank you. Scott, I'm going to ask you to take a trip down memory lane. 25 years ago, this coming weekend, you made your debut as a 16-year-old at Berry. Yeah. A long while ago, nearly that, eh? A long while 25 ago. 25 years ago, oh, no. it was still grey. <laughs> I'm sure you won't be able to find any pictures on the internet. I mean, it was a, no. Probably the internet don't exist back no. then, to be fair. <laughs> what can you remember about that day, first of all? I'm um, sure Newton got sent off. Yeah, yeah, I remember it. I remember it well. I, I remember not being... I didn't think I'd be in the squad. I remember I was a 16-year-old boy, so I didn't think I'd be travelling with the, with the first team. If I was travelling, I'd expected I was going to be making the tees to be honest with you on the coach on the way up and then obviously he was on on the bench I remember that excitement real nervous feeling um, which you have when you when you're first setting out really so and then I remember when when Alan Kirby she gave me the nod to to come on really so felt very quick felt very um the actual game and the environment what I was in but um big experience for me really and it was the start of of that dream of wanting to be a player really and cracking on from there You've given a lot of players their debuts since you've been the manager here. Does stepping into the Premier League make it more difficult to give young players debuts with not seeing many 16, 17 year olds in the No. I think it does, if for sure, that the quality of of the level of what you're going into every week is is much higher. I always say that whether you're 16, 18, 19, you, you give debuts first and foremost on players you feel have the ability and are good enough uh, at that moment to have an impact, really. Harvey Elliott, where I remember when I was at Fulham, was was an example of that, a young player we give a, we give a debut to and kicked on. He had the ability first and foremost, and I witnessed that daily. Um, so, yeah, look, I think it's more, more difficult, for sure, um, in this division, but like always, if the talent's there, and they can they can make the step up then for me I'm, I'm a real advocate of pushing them in just talking to young players the development squad kicked off their premier league cup campaign with a superb 3-0 win against brighton one of the top academies incredible in, in the country last night just give us your yeah reaction. incredible nil category one academy um unbelievable win really so you know i've always said it an amazing job the guys do in the academy coops Tommy, um, all them guys in and around it, what are developing the, the the young boys in probably at times difficult circumstances in terms of where we are as a category of club and that, but for sure um, an incredible result, um, did amazing. 
Um, just interesting there, obviously the excitement of being on a bench when you're making your debut in Barry. What, what was the emotion when you 3 nil down at, after half an hour at the Etihad <laughs> for the weekend? Um, yeah, look, it's difficult. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and lie. I mean, you, you go 3 nil down in 1-0 um, and then it obviously went free quite quickly. You, you obviously, we've seen it many times throughout the years of watching Man City and teams go to Man City. Um, you can be on the end of one really so I was I was immensely proud of the team and showed big courage big desire didn't let their head drop in that sense dug in stuck with everything um, so of course that's probably strange to say when you've just come off the bat uh, of a 4-0 four 4-0 four loss but that was probably my, my emotions really during it Man City Arsenal and Liverpool you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Yes, these are the challenges that we um, that we look forward to. They're the challenges that, that obviously we um, we worked so hard for last year. And while there's some absolute mm. mammoth ones and ones which um, are right up there in terms of big, big challenges, none bigger than last week when um, the heavyweight of of Man City. They're ones which we're excited about and looking forward to really. Just finally on the, the team news front, um, what's the latest with David Brooks and his involvement in the in the first team squad moving forward? David's pushed on. He's pushing on. Really, he's, he's now he's with the team in a modified um, modified in in terms of his training. But he's with us. He's not no longer on his own. So now he's split between the two groups of being on his own and then also being with us um, in a controlled environment. So I'd like to think that maybe over the next week or ten days we can start pushing him into into full training and then from there try and get him up to a level and speed of um, participating at a Premier League level really.